Kubernetes 127 is one of the biggest releases of Kubernetes so far with over 60 enhancements. And what you should ask yourself is, what do I get out of this version? This is why in this video, I'm going to take the top features in Kubernetes 127. I'm going to explain what they are good for, what are the use cases and how you can benefit out of them. Let's start. Kubernetes 127, also called Chill Vibes. And personally, I think it got the best logo of all time. I also added it into my laptop. It's a great opportunity to say thank you for everyone that have worked on this version. And for the first feature of the day, we are going to talk about node log access via Kubernetes API. And if you remember, in order to get the node logs, you would have to SSH to the node, go to maybe a logging system, or maybe use kubectl exec and actually get shell access to the node. In any possible way, it was not very easy way to consume that. So uh, what was added is actually the ability to get the logs using kubectl and using the API itself, make it much, much easier for everyone to maintain and understand what happened to the logs when you have a problem, it's a great release for everyone that's actually responsible to maintain the cluster. Moving up to the second feature of the day called in-place update of pod resources. So we all know the pod resources request limit CPU and memory. And before Kubernetes 127, if you want to change one of these values, that would cause a full rollout for any one of the pods in the deployment. But from Kubernetes 127, what we can do is actually to change the request or more important, the limits, actually causing the pods to change that in place and not to cause a full rollout. Obviously the application, the infrastructure should support that. That's super cool. If you want to read more, like any one of the feature in this video, I'm going to add the documentation and all the relevant link in the description below. So just find it there. Moving up to the third feature called configurable grace period for probes. What it means is that during pod termination, if it caused by a liveness probe, it means that it will not act to the default termination grace period defi defined for the container, but for the probe itself. You can control and make it shorter grace period for like shorter termination or longer if you want to make sure everything is closed, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So it's a really useful and you can use it with using this configuration. And if you are talking about probes, good news for everyone who are using gRPC because gRPC probes are now stable, making sure that you get the full support and all the Kubernetes capabilities into your gRPC services. Our next capability is really amazing. It got a complex name, but it's very simple to understand. So it's called the Enhanced Container Resource-Based Pod Autoscaling. And what it means is that HPA will follow every specific pod in the resources that you reference to. So for example, if you have a deployment with 10 pods, what happened right now is that HPA will follow a calculated matrix from all of the pods together and will trigger based on that. And right now, even if one pod is getting increased, making sure that even one, if one of them suffer all the loads, uh, then HPA will trigger a scale up during this situation. Moving to talk a little bit about out of memory and memory quality of service. So in pre-releases, Kubernetes trying to change a little bit the way memory and memory consumption, utilization, pressure, and out of memory killer process work, there is a new way and enhancement using C groups V2 that is going to be added in this version. What is going to change is the way Kubernetes and C groups V2 actually reclaim and trigger the out of memory killer. It's a really good feature. You don't need to do anything in order to activate it. If you want to read more, you can find a link with more information in the description below. How can we talk about new version without talking about security? This feature is going to make your CISO security team happy because second default graduates to stable. And what it means is that you can have a second policy by default to the containers uh, in any one of the deployments. It means that basically you can limit the system calls that each container can use from the Linux kernel and making sure that your containers are not using system calls that you are not allow them to have. 
The next two capabilities are around scheduling. The first one called pod scheduling readiness and what it allows you is basically to submit a pod with a condition that it's going to be scheduled only when the condition is met. So for example, you're going to submit the pod from one service and another service is going to be marked them as ready for scheduling. The second feature called mutable scheduling directive for jobs means that you can change some of the scheduling directives for jobs uh, while they are in the scheduling queue. Our next capability is around the usability of cron jobs. And what was added is that you can define the cron job time zone, making it to be scheduled based on the specific time zone. And if you have multiple time zone complexities in your system, that really allows you to control the jobs and the cron jobs scheduling. Really useful, really simple, I like it. Our last two capabilities are around storage and volume. So the first one is stateful set PVC auto deletion. What it means, it's when you delete a stateful set, all the storage and volume components, like the volume, the PVC, will be deleted as well. It's super useful because in some system you can find a lot of PVC that are not related to stateful set, which means that you pay for the storage and the system getting more complex. And the last capability called volume group snapshot. And what it allows you is basically to take a snapshot of volume group all together at once. It's very useful for databases that they need to take a backup in a very specific point of time, like a checkpoint. So what happens is that you uh, suspend the log or do some tricks in the database, and then you take the snapshot in the same time, same point at all across your volume and databases. It's really useful and it's taken from storage provider that those were the main capabilities and features in Kubernetes 127 that I believe are the most useful ones. If you want to learn more, I'm going to add a link in the description below so you can explore more of the enhancement, more of the bug that were fixed during this version. And if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much.